This video is a hands-on review of the Sony A6400. If you're here watching this now, it's because you're either interested in buying one or interested in specific features. With that in mind, I've hopefully tailored this review for you. Jump into the description and you'll see timestamps showing you specific parts of the review that you could look at if you're interested in photography, video, or autofocus. Okay guys, let's go for it. On the outside of the camera, toppity down, you can see the horseshoe mount right here. You can connect a microphone or a light or whatever you like. On the right hand side, you have a invisible flash. Well, almost. Let's switch the on button and then the flash button and he pops up. You're not gonna use the flash most of the time, so put him back to bed. On the right hand side, you have a mode dial. You can easily switch between photography and video modes to your heart's content. You have an on off switch, probably didn't need to mention that. And then you have a C1 button, which is actually a really handy feature. You can change your focus areas with it. On the back of the camera, you're greeted with a 2.36 million dot TrueFinder OLED electronic viewfinder. Now, the outside of this camera is very similar to the A6300 and A6500. If you own one of them cameras, then you probably wanna to skip to the next section. Let's have a look at the menu. Now, the menu system on this camera has changed. And this is great news because it's now the same menu as the third generation a7. The menu before this was very complicated and just really horrible to use. Now I've never been a fan of Sony menus but this is definitely a lot easier to navigate. All the buttons on the back are still the same as you experienced with the A6300 but a few things have changed. One of the things that's changed is that you can assign specific features to different buttons. All you have to do is go into the menu area. When you're in the menu area, you can then choose an option. And this option is custom key. Selecting custom key enables you to choose different features for different buttons. This is a brilliant idea. You can actually assign all different buttons to have different features. And this is gonna make your life a lot easier. On the side of the camera, you have the inputs you would expect. You have the HDMI, the USB, and you have the microphone input. Now you don't actually have the headphone input, which is a bit of a shame, but I don't think that's gonna make a massive difference for most people buying the camera. Let's go to the bottom of the camera. Now it's not usually an area that concerned with, but here you can see a thread for your tripod and then also your battery compartment. Now the battery inside hasn't changed. It's still the same battery as the A6300. And notably that camera had pretty poor battery life. But there is good news. This camera does have better battery performance. And that's due to a few features we're gonna discuss later in the video. Let's pop that back in there. So that's the outside of the Sony A6400. Before we jump into the specific areas of this review, let's talk about some overall features. This is a 24.2 APS-C sized sensor. In fact, it's the same sensor you find on the A6300. Nothing wild there, Sony. But what has changed is the processor. The processor on the A6400 is the same as you will find on the Sony A9. The reason I'm doing that gesture is because the Sony A9 is priced there and the A6400 is priced somewhere around about there. So that's amazing. Sony have put the same processor on this camera. But what does this mean? Well, it means improved color science and significantly better focusing. You also get 425 phase and contrast detection points on the back of this camera. That covers around about 84% of the back of your frame, which is gonna be more than enough for pretty much any kind of autofocus situation. Okay guys, let's jump into the first section of the review, which is video. The A6400 offers amazing high resolution 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second. You can shoot internal UHD 4K with full pixel readout. This means no pixel binning. The camera collects about 2.4 times 
the amount of data required for 4K movies and then oversamples it to produce high quality 4K footage. This gives you exceptional detail and depth. Add to this the improved color science that you get with the A6400 and the exceptional autofocus you get in 4K and this makes the A6400 great for creative movie production. You also get video profiles like S-Log and HLG. You can even grade your footage to take it to the next level. You have slow motion options up to five times and you have quick motion up to 60 times straight from the camera. The A6400 shoots full HD at 24, 30, 60 and 120 frames per second. The Sony A6400 has no record limit and that's great because all the cameras in the class do have a record limit. In fact, Fuji's and the other Sony's like the A6300 would cut off at a certain point. This is because they overheated. But with the A6400, you don't get this. You can carry on recording for as long as you like. So far, everything's been positive about the video on the A6400 and it really is good. But let's talk about the few things which have been bothering people. The first thing is the IBIS. There's no image stabilization inside the camera. Honestly though, if you're a serious video creator, you're gonna buy a lens which has the image stabilization built in. Alternatively, you're gonna have some kind of gimbal system. So many people have been talking about the rolling shutter, saying it's terrible, it's the worst. It's not that bad. Okay, so I've just recorded this little clip here showing a 4K rolling shutter. See what you think. I don't think it's that bad at all. So that's the video for the Sony A6400. Let me tell you what I was impressed with. The 4K footage on this camera is absolutely phenomenal. Also, the color science is really, really impressive. Now, the autofocus we're gonna talk about in a minute is also great. So when you pair all this as a video creation package, it takes something to beat this camera for under a thousand pound. In fact, I'd go as far as saying it's pretty much the best at the moment. The next section is autofocus. Now this is one of the parts about this camera I was most intrigued about. I love good autofocus. There's nothing better than switching your camera on and just feeling comfortable in the knowledge that you're not gonna be out of focus and whatever you're recording is gonna just be good. Now I've always experienced this with the dual pixel autofocus on Canon and that's what I've always used to record most of my studio stuff with. So using a Sony and using their new um, eye autofocus system, or should I say their updated version of this, was always really interesting to me to see if it was as good as the Canon dual pixel autofocus. The first test was just to make sure that we could keep focus easily with the A6400 with the subject walking towards the camera. And as you can see, that worked a treat. This was a bit unconventional, but this was to see if we could keep track on the body and the face. Finally, we wanted to check that we could keep focus on the subject if another subject walked in front of the screen. Let's take a closer look. As you can see, we have perfect focus on the face and eyes. The face detection and the eye detection on the A6400 is incredible. And when shooting a distant person in motion, the tracking system captures the whole body. You can also touch and then select to track the individual as they're moving. So my impressions of the autofocus on the Sony A6400 is it really is incredible. Is it as good as the dual pixel autofocus? I really don't know. I mean, they're so close, but yet they're still so different. So it's difficult for me to say, but what I will say is both systems are phenomenally good. So I wouldn't begrudge you going for either because I think both are gonna perform just as well as each other. Let's talk photo, one of my favorite things. A lot of you that have been on the channel for a while will know I'm a photographer by trade. So I was always interested in knowing what this camera would do based on its photos. The A6400 shoots up to 11 frames per second, which is very impressive for a camera under a thousand pound. When shooting at this frame rate, you get minimal display lag. It is kind of noticeable, but not really that much. You can take up to around 116 shots in JPEG and 46 shots in compressed RAW format. A feature which has been really overshadowed by all the other good features on this camera though, and something that I really dig, is the silent continuous shooting up to eight frames per second. When your shoot calls for absolute quiet, such as when you're photographing a live performance, silent shooting with no shutter noise allows shooting up to eight frames per second, even in autofocus continuous mode. 
even though the 24 megapixel sensor is the same as what you find on the A6300, what's changed is that Sony have paired it with the new Bionex processor found in their flagship camera. This has meant that the pairing with these two aids in boosting light collection efficiency. Basically put, it's better noise suppression in higher ISOs and in turn, this means better low light performance. I went out and captured some images with the A6400 and found it to be a very impressive stills camera. For under a thousand pound, it really is a great piece of kit. I found that you got better color reproduction and also improved skin tone. You also seem to get a lot more vibrant and accurate colors in such things like vegetation. Everything just seemed to pop more. Now, Sony obviously said that this was improved, but actually seeing this for myself was really quite promising. And it made me realize that Sony have really done a great job when it comes to photo with this camera. The last section that we're gonna look at is vlogging. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much depth in this section because I'm gonna make a video all about it in a few days. So here I am, screen's flipped up and I'm in vlogging mode. That's right, let's watch out for these trees. It's a bit close around here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not too bad. I actually think this screen's better than I thought it'd be. I'm so used to the Canon fully articulated screen that I thought that this screen might be a bit of a pain in the ass. But you know what, walking around with it like this is not too bad. I actually quite like it. I will say, of course, though, we have to address the issue of the horseshoe mount which is on top of this right here and if you want to stick a microphone there you're going to have to stick it on an L bracket underneath and that's the only real way that it's going to work of course unless you record the audio separately anyway this is vlogging through the woods okay so to wrap things up for the sony a6400 this is what I think. This camera is such good value for money. At under a thousand pound, you get so many features. And what I'm really impressed with, more so than anything, is probably the autofocus and the quality of the 4K. Yes, this camera has been touted as a vlogging camera, but that doesn't really blow my mind because there's so many other vlogging cameras out there which are just the same price as this or cheaper. And you don't necessarily need all the features that you get on this camera for vlogging. But I just think this camera is such good quality. The 4K on this camera is exceptionally good. The color science is amazing. Dare I say it, as good as Canon's now or even better. And the same as the autofocus. I think the autofocus is definitely on par with that of Canon's. It's a completely different autofocus system. I'd say Sony's is quicker. And I'd say that Canon's is probably still slightly more accurate. But overall, for under a thousand pound, this is one heck of a camera, if you're choosing it for photography, if you're choosing it for video, or if you're choosing it for vlogging. I hope you've enjoyed today's review on the Sony a6400. And remember, I'm actually making another video on this all about vlogging and how it performs as a vlogging camera in a couple of days. So if you wanna check that out, hit subscribe, and then join our growing community. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one.